and hello everyone welcome back to another c plus plus tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be talking about composition composition is when you use an object inside of another object so let's see an example of this so first i would like to create two new files birth day.hpp or just .h depending on what you prefer and then also birthday.cpp now in here we can just go if not defined birthday underscore h then define birthday and of course we can just go hashtag end if class birth birth day and we only need two functions here that are in public the first function is just the birthday so it, this would be the the constructor where we have an int d for day int m for month and an int y for year and then we need a function to actually just print the date print date cool then as for private we can have int month day and year and this will of course hold all of the variables for us that contains the month day and year then it's after birthday.c++ we can just include io stream and also include birthday.hpp now you can just say birthday and then colon colon birthday which takes in all we can actually just copy this because that's quite a lot of typing that we really do need to do just paste all of that in here and all we need to do is we can just say day is equal to d month is equal to m and year is equal to y now because we don't have different types of variable names here so for example this isn't day and day we could just do this because we know that the top level would be this in case you have forgotten but you could still if you want to say this that's perfectly fine as well there's nothing wrong with saying this here just in this scenario it's not really required to say this and here we could of course say void birthday and then we can just print the date and this will of course hold c out day and we can add a slash month and another slash and then finally year and this will of course just print the date it's very basic we can then go into main.cpp just to make sure everything works and say hashtag include birthday.hpp then here we could say birthday and then I'm just gonna say b-day for birthday and we can say 5 8 2002 and that would be my birthday and of course we can just say b-day dot print date and that will of course print the birthday to us now if we were to run this and uh, my bad I should go g++ and birthday.c++ output and output and there we go that's 5 8 2002 so if you have got until here then everything works next up let's create a person.hpp and a person.cpp then uh, first let's just copy everything from birthday and let's just modify it so instead of birthday we can say person and here we can just hashtag include string this just allows us to use a lot of string functions usually if you just use normal io stream then that usually also includes string but if you don't necessarily care about that and you just want to be able to use a string, then you can also just include string and then you don't have to include a whole IO stream 
library. And we can of course change this to person. And in private, we'll have two variables. First, their name, so std string name, and then also the birthday object. So we want to give every person their own birthday, which is its own object. This is a very basic example, but it will also allow you to kind of imagine what you could do with this once you scale it up a bit. And we can just say birthday and then date of birth. Now we need to actually include birthday to use this. So we can just say hashtag include and then birthday dot HPP. And this will allow us to use birthday here. Then in public, we only need two things. First, we of course need the person. And here we could of course say name, date of birth. Where name is of course a string. And we can actually just use that here. And in date of birth, which is of course a birthday. And then we also want a function called toString. A lot of times classes will have a toString function. A toString function is a function that basically summarizes an object for you. And then it returns a string ver version of that object. So let's say you have a person that, that's very big class, bigger than this one, and you call toString on it. Then it will display the person name, the person age, the person date of birth or whatnot. And that's what toString will do. It will just convert your entire class into a string. I'll show you an example of this. We can just say void toString and as a function. Cool. The next up is person.cpp. Here, of course, we can include IO stream and also include person.hpp. It's, of course, person, person, which takes in, and we can just yet again copy what it takes in here. You don't have to type it out. And here, of course, we could put it here and say this is equal to this or just bur name is equal to name, whatnot. But we could also use this method that I taught you all in a previous tutorial. Name, name, date of birth, date of birth. And there you go. Now you can also assume that this will be assigning these variables to them. But mainly we're doing this because we have an object here. This object kind of forces us to do this specifically because you can't quite do this the date of birth and in say date of birth that's a little weird so we need to do this instead all right and then finally we can do two string so void person two string and here we can just see out was born on and we can just say name and then we can just say date of birth dot print date. You could also say this dot date of birth dot print date. That's also fine. And there we go. So of course, if your class was a lot bigger, you would have to, of course, scale this up and display more content. But we only have two variables. So we only have to really two string those two variables. So this two string just kind of summarizes the class, everything that we have in it, or at least everything we have in it that we want people to see when they use the class. If there's some private variable there that you don't want people to see or touch or even know about, then it would be perfectly fine to not display it into a two string here. All right. Now let's go to main.cpp and let's include, include person.hpp. Now, because person.hpp includes this birthday.hpp, you could remove it. There's nothing wrong with it. However, it's recommended to still keep it there if you're going to be using birthday here, even if it's included in person.hpp. Because in the future, you might remove birthday from person.hpp and you're getting a bunch of errors everywhere because you didn't include that birthday here and it's no longer being included in person. 
So it's still recommended to include both, but the program can run currently without that birthday.hpp since in person with HPP, it's already there. Then of course, now we can go here and say person Steve, which is me, Steve, and then just B day. And this will work. And then we can of course say Steve dot two string to stringify all of this. And now we can compile our program. Just include person dot HPP here or CPP I mean. And there we go. Steve was born on 5 8 2002. Now let's quickly just go back to person here. Now if we try to say this name is equal to name and this date of birth is equal to date of birth and then just of course remove that then once we hover over this it says no default constructor constructor exists for class birthday and of course i don't think this quick fix will really do anything yeah but because we can't really do this this isn't really allowed because you'll notice if we hover over this it's birthday person date of birth Whilst the, the here, it's just birthday date of birth. And if we try and run this, it's going to error out on us because it's not allowed. So to use an object inside of another object, you will have to unfortunately use this constants method that we learned about. And yeah, that's how to use one object inside of another. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next C++ tutorial.